revised estimate of the fiscal deficit is 6.4 percent of GDP adhering to the budget estimate. So budget estimates of 2023-24 coming to 2023-24 the total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 27.2 lakh crores and 45 uh, lakh crores respectively. The net tax receipts are estimated at 23.3 lakh crores. The fiscal deficit is estimated to be 5.9 percent of the GDP. In my budget speech for 21-22, I had announced that we plan to continue the path of fiscal consolidation, reaching a fiscal deficit of below 4.5 percent by 2025-26 with a fairly steady decline over the period. We have adhered to this path and I reiterate my intention to bring the fiscal deficit below 4.5 percent of GDP by 2025-26. To finance the fiscal deficit in 2023-24, the net market borrowings from dated securities are estimated at 11.8 lakh crores. The balance financing is expected to come from small savings and other sources. The gross market borrowings are estimated at 15.43 lakh crores of rupees. Honorable Speaker, sir, I now move to part B. Indirect taxes. My indirect tax proposals will aim to promote exports, boost domestic manufacturing, enhance domestic value addition, encourage green energy and mobility. A simplified tax structure with fewer tax rates helps in reducing compliance burden and improving tax administration. I propose to reduce the number of basic customs duty rates on goods other than textiles and agriculture from 21 to 13. As a result, there are minor changes in the basic custom duties, <coughs> cesses and surcharges on some items including toys, bicycle, automobiles and naphtha. Green mobility. To avoid cascading of taxes on blended compressed natural gas, I propose to exempt excise duty on GST paid compressed biogas contained in it. To further provide impetus to green mobility, customs duty exemptions is being extended to import of capital goods and machinery required for manufacture of lithium ion ba cells for batteries used in electrical vehicles as well. Electronics, as a result of various initiatives of the government, including phased manufacturing program, Mobile phone production in India has increased from 5.8 crore units valid, uh, valued at about 18,900 crore in 2014-15 to 31 crore units valued at 2,75,000 crore in the last financial year. To further deepen domestic value addition in manufacturing of mobile phones, I propose to provide relief to customer, customs duty I propose to provide relief in customs duty on import of certain parts and inputs like camera lens and continue the concessional duty on lithium ion cells for batteries for another year. Similarly, to promote value addition in manufacture of televisions, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on parts of open cells of TV panels to 2.5 percent. Electrical, to rectify inversion of duty, to rectify inversion of duty structure and encourage manufacturing of electric kitchen chimneys, the basic custom duty on electric kitchen chimney is being increased from 7.5 percent to 15 percent and that on heat coils for these is proposed to be reduced from 20 percent to 15 percent. Chemicals and petrochemicals. Denatured ethyl 
alcohol is used in chemical industry. I propose to exempt basic customs duty on it. This will also support the ethanol blending program and facilitate an endeavor for energy transition. Basic customs duty is also being reduced on acid grade fluorospar from 5% to 2.5% to make the domestic fluorochemicals industry competitive. Further, the basic customs duty on crude glycerin for use in manufacture of epichlorohydrine is proposed to be reduced from 7.5% to 2.5%. Marine products. In the last financial year, marine products recorded the highest export growth, benefiting farmers in the coastal states of the country. To further enhance the export competitiveness of marine products, particularly shrimps, due, duty is being reduced on key inputs for domestic manufacture of shrimp feed. India is a global leader, as I said in Part A in cutting and polishing of natural diamonds, contributing about three-fourths of the global turnover by value. With the depletion of deposits of natural diamonds, the industry is moving towards lab-grown diamonds, and it holds huge promise. To seize this opportunity, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on seeds used in their manufacture. Custom duties on door or doré and bars of gold and platinum were increased earlier this fiscal. I propose to increase the duties of, on articles made therefrom to enhance the duty differential. I also propose to increase the import duty on silver doors, bars and articles to align them with that on gold and platinum. To facilitate availability of raw materials, for the steel sector, exemptions from basic custom duty on raw materials for manufacture of CRGO steel, ferrous scrap, and nickel cathode is being continued. Similarly, the concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap is also being continued to ensure the availability of raw materials for secondary copper producers who are mainly in the MSME sectors. Compounded rubber. The basic custom duty rate on compounded rubber is being increased from 10% to 25% or 30 kg, whichever is lower, at par with that of natural rubber other than latex to curb circumvention of duty. Cigarettes, national calamity contingent duty on specified cigarettes was last revised three years ago. This is proposed to be revised upwards by about 16% direct taxes. I now come to my direct tax proposals. Honorable Speaker, these proposals aim to maintain continuity and stability of taxation, further simplify and rationalize various provisions to reduce the compliance burden, promote the entrepreneurial spirit, and provide tax relief to citizens. It has been constant endeavor of the Income Tax Department to improve taxpayer services by making compliance easy and smooth. Our taxpayers' portal received a maximum of 72 lakh returns in a day, processed more than 6.5 crore returns this year. Average processing period reduced from 93 days in financial year 13-14 to 16 days only now. And 45% of the returns were processed within 24 hours. We intend to further improve this, roll out the next generation common IT return form for taxpayer convenience, and also plan to strengthen the grievance redressal mechanism. MSMEs and professionals. MSMEs are growth engines of our economy. Micro enterprises with turnover up to two crore of rupees and certain professionals with turnover of up to 50 lakh rupees can avail the benefit of presumptive taxation. I propose to provide enhanced limits of 3 crore and 75 lakh respectively to the taxpayers whose cash receipts are no more than 5%.
whose cash receipts are no more than 5 percent. Moreover, to support MSMEs in timely receipt of payments, I propose to allow deduction for expenditure incurred on payments made to them only when payment is actually made. Cooperation. Cooperation is a value to be cherished. In realizing our Prime Minister's goal for Sahikar Se Samriddhi and his resolve to connect the spirit of cooperation with the spirit of Amrit Kal, in addition to the measures proposed in Part A, I have a slew of proposals for the cooperation sector. First, new cooperatives that commence manufacturing activities till 2024, 31st March, shall get the benefit of a lower tax rate of 15 percent, as is presently available to new manufacturing companies. Secondly, I propose to provide an opportunity to sugar cooperatives to claim payments made to uh, sugarcane farmers for the period prior to the assess assessment year 2016-17 as expenditure. This is expected to provide them a relief of almost 10,000 crores. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to loans in cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary agriculture, primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks. I repeat that. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to and loans in cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary cooperative agricultural and rural development banks. Similarly, a higher limit of 3 crore for TDS on cash withdrawal is being provided to cooperative societies. Startups. Entrepreneurship is vital for a country's economic development. We have taken a number of measures for startups and they have borne results. India is now the third largest ec ecosystem for startups globally and ra ranks second in innovation quality among middle income countries. I propose to extend the date of incorporation for income tax benefits to startups from 31 3 2023 to 31 3 2024. I further propose to provide the benefit of carry forward of losses on, on change of shareholding of startups from seven years of incorporation to 10 years. To reduce the pendency of appeals at commissioner level, I propose to deploy about 100 joint commissioners for disposal of small appeals. We shall also be more selective in taking up cases for scrutiny of returns already received this year. Better targeting of tax concessions. For better targeting of tax concessions and exemptions, I propose to cap deduction from capital gains on investment in residential house under section 54 and section 54F to 10 crores. Another proposal with similar intent is to limit income tax exemption from proceeds of insurance policies with very high value. Rationalization. Honorable Speaker, sir, there are a number of proposals relating to rationalization and simplification. Income of authorities, boards, and commissions set up by statutes of union or state for the purpose of housing development of cities, towns, and villages, and regulating or reg regulating and developing an activity or matter is proposed to be exempted from income tax. Other me major, major measures in this direction are removing the minimum threshold of 10,000 for TDS and clarifying taxability relating to online gaming, not treating conversion of gold into electronic gold receipts and vice versa as capital gains. 
reducing the TDS rate from 30% to 20% on taxable portion of EPF withdrawals in non-PAN cases and 